Hello viewers, welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to take a look at a tool called curl.sh to set up Kubernetes cluster. It's going to generate dynamic script which you then need to run on your virtual machines or your physical servers where you want to set up your Kubernetes cluster and the script will do the heavy lifting for you. It will, it's going to set up the Kubernetes cluster and then uh, using the same script, you can set up additional worker nodes and so on. In fact, this tool was recommended by one of my viewers. So I took a look and it it was in fact a good tool so I'm gonna go to curl.sh so that's the website and what you basically need to do is uh, it gives you a list of add-ons okay so basically you are designing your Kubernetes cluster and once you are completed with designing your cluster it's going to give you a URL right here and you just need to copy paste that url in your kubernetes node in your virtual machine that you want to set up as kubernetes nodes either master or worker nodes all right so let's take a look at all of these we have the kubernetes and they call it add-ons at the moment they only have very limited set of add-ons but i hope going forward they would add expand this uh, set of add-ons to cover more add-ons more packages more softwares but as of now you can see this is the list of add-ons that you get with this tool okay so so Kubernetes is selected by default. That's not the add-on, that's the actual product. And you can get to select different versions depending on your liking. And you can also configure the individual add-on. Say for example, if you want to change the uh, network CIDR for some reason, or if you want to use a separate load balancer, if you want to set this up as a HA cluster and so on. So each of these add-on will have its own set of configurations that you can configure further. Okay, so Kubernetes, there's no option it's already selected and when it comes to container runtime they support docker and container d docker is selected by default if you want you can select different versions and there is the configuration that you can do okay so that's container runtime cni plugin they only support weave at the moment there's no uh, calico flannel or uh, anything else so weave again you can choose which version of weave you want and it has got its own set of configurations and ingress controller if you want it comes with contour cluster administration i haven't used ekco i don't know what that is i need to give that a try and for log collection in your kubernetes cluster there's an option to use fluentd and if you select fluentd and each time you make changes to this list of fields you will see the the URL getting updated behind the scene the URL is basically a script so when you access that URL it's going to give you a script and then you run that script using your bash if you look at the uh, script now it says so now it has changed to b 6 ba and let's say I'm gonna select this one and the URL changes so depending on your selection here it will change so I don't want logs in my Kubernetes cluster this is just for demonstration purpose you can choose which version of fluentd you want and if you want a full EFK stack or not and so on okay so that's logs application management cards I haven't used cards yet and for object story you've got Minio and Rook I'm gonna unselect Rook as well for PVC provisioner you've got open EBS and for cluster metrics and monitoring you've got Prometheus I'm gonna unselect that one as well registry do you want to um, include private docker registry in your Kubernetes cluster I don't want and you've got Valero for cluster snapshots backup and restore I think I've done a couple of videos on Valero as well. So the idea is you just choose what components you want in your Kubernetes cluster and you've got some basic configurations that you can do in this uh, thing. So right now I've got my Kubernetes selected by default and apart from Kubernetes, I've got the container runtime and the container network interface CNI selected as Weave. That's it. Okay, I'm also going to unselect Ingress, EKCO. Okay, so I don't have anything apart from Docker and Weave network. Okay, so now all we need to do is just copy this URL and run it on our virtual machine. I don't have any virtual machine, but I'm going to spin up a couple of Ubuntu virtual machines. Um, one I'm going to run as master and one I'm going to run as worker node. Okay, so I'm gonna git clone my Vagrant GitHub repository. CD to Vagrant, Vagrant files and Ubuntu 20. I've got my Vagrant file there. And if I edit my Vagrant file, I want uh, two nodes. And I'm also going to change the number of CPUs to two. 
So each of my virtual machines is going to be Ubuntu 2004 and the name of the machines are Ubuntu VM01, Ubuntu VM02 and each of them will have their own private network. I mean the same private network with their uh, private IP address 172.16.16.101 and 102 with 2 gig of memory and 2 CPUs. Alright, let's bring up these two virtual machines. Vagrant up. It's going to take a couple of minutes. I'm going to pause the video and come back when the machines are ready. Okay, so our two virtual machines are up and running. I'm going to log into the first machine, Ubuntu VM01. Vagrant SSH Ubuntu VM01. By the way, I'm using Ubuntu 2004 for this video, but uh, you can use any Linux distribution, I think. I have tested this on Ubuntu and CentOS, but it should support all uh, Linux distributions, I hope. These two virtual machines, Ubuntu VM01 and VM02, are brand new Ubuntu 2004 virtual machines. I haven't done anything. So I haven't installed Docker, I haven't disabled swap, I haven't done any kernel settings, I haven't done anything at all. It's just brand new Ubuntu 2004 virtual machines. The idea is you don't have to do anything, you just need to have your machines ready and then run that script that will set up your cluster. By default, it's going to set up a master node and then at the end of the installation, it's going to give you a command which you then need to run on your worker node to join your worker nodes to this Kubernetes cluster. Just make sure you've got uh, pseudo privileges because I'm using Vagrant. Vagrant has got pseudo privileges so I can become root. Okay. But make sure the user that you're using to run the script uh, has the pseudo privileges or in fact you can run as a root user. Okay, so now going back to this website, you just need to copy this URL and run it on your virtual machine. So, but I would advise you to take a look before running any scripts from internet. So this is a very, very dangerous thing. So all we are doing here is we're just downloading a random shell script from internet and we are running it with pseudo privileges. So it can't do anything to your machine. So the user that you're trying to run, if it has full pseudo privileges and if you're running this command blindly, it might do any harm to your system. But I trust this website and I've tested this. So there's no problem. But in general, anywhere if you see commands like this, especially with the sudo, and you don't know what this is going to do, just just run the first part of this command and download the script. Take a look at what it's actually trying to do. And then if you trust it, if you know what it's exactly going to do, then run the full script. Okay, in my case, I'm happy with it. So copy the command and run it. The first thing is it's downloading the script from that website and then it's going to run. So probably it will be, it will be asking me a couple of questions and then it's going to continue with the installation. The installation will take about 10 minutes depending on your internet speed. It will download a, a bunch of Docker containers it will bootstrap your cluster and so on. So in total in my machine when I tested it took about seven or eight minutes. Okay, so the first question it asks me is swapping is enabled. So I didn't disable swap as I told you this is a brand new Ubuntu 2004 virtual machine. I haven't done any setup. So the first thing it wants me to do is is asking whether it's okay to disable swap. We have to. So I'm going to hit enter because Y is the default option. Okay, so swap is disabled and finally it's going to ask one more question which is to choose the network interface. Because I'm running it in a virtual box, the first interface ETH0 is host only adapter which I don't want to or which I can't really use for Kubernetes traffic. So I had to use the second private network that I have attached to my virtual box. So in this case I'm going to choose one and that's it so leave it aside go and get a cup of coffee and it will take about 10 minutes I'm gonna pause the video and come back when it's done all right the command completed and you can use bash minus L now to open up a new bash login shell and you can start interacting with your kubernetes cluster with kubectl commands or you can log out and log back into your virtual machine and then straight away you can start using kubectl command okay so uh, if you notice the at the bottom there is a command to run on the worker nodes if you wish to join additional virtual machines worker nodes to this cluster. So that's the command that you need to be running. But one thing to bear in mind, the Kubernetes admin token is valid only for 24 hours. So this command here, you can't use it after 24 hours to join additional worker nodes. In that case, what you basically need to do is you just need to run this command here, which will generate a new token and give you a new worker node join command, which you then need to run on your worker nodes to join that node to your cluster. Okay, let me open up another pane and let me log into Vagrant, Vagrant files, Ubuntu 20. 
Let me log into my other virtual machine, Ubuntu VM02, and then we can run this command so that the command um, will join this worker node to our Kubernetes cluster. All right, so I'm pasting that command again, similar to what we saw in the master node, it's going to ask us for two questions. One is to disable swap, and the second command is to choose the network interface that we want to use for Kubernetes traffic. Okay, so I'm gonna choose one for the ETH1 network interface. That's it, it's again going to take another eight to 10 minutes to set up this node as a worker node and to join this node to our Kubernetes cluster. Meanwhile, we can run here on our master node we can do bash minus L and now we can do which kubectl we have kubectl kubectl cluster info there we go so that's our kubernetes cluster and I can do kubectl get nodes right now we've got only one node which is the master node Ubuntu VMO1 Ubuntu VMO2 is in the process of setting up and also you can exit out of log out of your virtual machine and then log back in vagrant SSH Ubuntu VMO1 and you should be able to run kubectl commands the path have been already updated to include the kubectl binary kubectl cluster info there we go kubectl get nodes we're all good and let's also take a look at what's in the kube system namespace kubectl minus n kube system get all okay maybe if i do get pods Okay, so we have CoreDNS, we have HCD running, we have API server, controller, kube proxy, scheduler, and Weave is our container network interface. Okay, well, well it's doing it. So I've, I've been running kubectl commands on the master virtual machine directly. So if you want to run it from your host machine, for example, if you want to run it from my laptop, if I exit out of the virtual machine, so I've logged out of my uh, master virtual machine. So now I'm on my host machine, which is my laptop. And all I need to do is let me remove if I've got the dot cube directory. Okay, so make a directory called dot cube under your home directory and we're gonna copy the Kubernetes configuration file from the master node to our local machine, which is my laptop. The command is scp172.16.16.101, .16 which is my Ubuntu VMO1, the master machine. And the file that I'm going to copy is etc kubernetes admin.conf and I'm copying it into the dot cube directory under my home directory as the file config. Okay, and the password is admin if you're using my Vagrant environment. Okay, so we've copied that and now we should be able to use kubectl. Make sure to download kubectl binary to your host machine and then you should be able to run all the kubectl commands. There we go, kubectl get nodes. We've got everything ready. All right, the installation completed on Ubuntu VMO2. So now we should be able to see Ubuntu VMO2 as the worker node in our Kubernetes cluster. So if I do kubectl get nodes, you will see Ubuntu VMO2, which is a worker node. Okay, let's quickly deploy uh, an Nginx container. kubectl create deploy Nginx minus minus image Nginx. And if I do kubectl get all, and you will see the nginx container getting created let's give it a few more seconds and then let's verify if it's running right kubectl get all our nginx pod is running i think that's it for this video give this a try let me know if you need any help and uh, thanks for watching i'll see you all in my next video until then keep learning and keep on learning Bye bye